So we're going to play Tinder. <laughs> um, we're going to start out, and I'm going to put some profile pictures up here. And I want you guys to tell me just one word you think of to describe these people. Just the first adjective that pops into your head. Once you raise your hand and share that word, I'm going to extrapolate a bit on the potential implications of the words that you share with me. So let's start out. This guy. Yes. Adventurous. Yeah. So I can. Yeah. You want to go? Yeah. Photo. Photoshop. Okay. So it's fake. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Adventurous, right? So you're probably not going to find a tiger like this in the U.S. unless it's in a zoo or something like that. So I can see that. I, I thought animal lover. I thought friendly. I thought kind. Definitely an appeal to our compassionate nature. Next. Ah. Oh, yes. Sexual, yeah. So sexy or fit, that's definitely the first one I thought. This this lady, she's holding a clear glass of liquid in her hand. I don't know if you guys can tell, but it's indicating that she clearly is looking to have a good time, right? This guy. What do you think? Yes. Dorky. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, so I, I saw country a bit, right, because you've got the camo and the flannel and, you know, maybe thirsty, right, because he's got the thermos. It's almost as if he has a pensive look on his face, right? It's like he's gazing off into the distance. I can hear the ever so slight tune chiming in the background. Baby, you a song. You make me want to roll my windows down. Cruise. I, I don't like country music, so I can't. That's all I can do. Next. This lady. She's a bit more ambiguous, so let me give you a sec. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so both. She said friendly or professional. You can see that because of the professional attire, right? But she's she's got a relaxed hairstyle, and she's got a nose ring to her, if you can see that. So it's one of those things where she's saying, hey, guys, I'm formal, but I also like to party, right? Next. This guy. Yes. <laughs> Arrogant. Yeah, so it's the raised eyebrow, right? It's almost as if he's like indicating that he knows something that we don't. For when I first saw this guy, I kind of I pictured him with a Russian accent. I don't, you know, maybe it's just a Katie thing. I don't know, maybe I have a thing for Russian guys, but let's try it out. Everybody just kind of look up at him and try to picture this inflection coming from his voice. Uh, please do let me introduce myself. Hello, my name is Victor, and I am about to show you a very good time. Did it work? Yeah. <laughs> Last one. Oh, it? Anybody? Come on. Yes. Goofy. Yeah. So he could, you know, he could be taken psychotic, right? So, or a, a comedian. He could be funny. You know, the fact that he's on a unicorn, though, maybe he's trying to indicate to the public, hey, guys, just like this mythical creature I'm on the back of, you're not going to find anybody else like me anytime soon. All of these potential suitors have redeeming qualities about themselves. Maybe I look at the animal lover and think, you know, I just want that man to love and cuddle me like that cute little tiger. Or maybe I think, you know, actually, I just want to be swept off my feet by Mr. Victor Suave and be taken to an exotic resort. Or maybe I think, well, you know what, actually, I kind of just want to hop on that unicorn with Mr. Naked Guy and take an aeronautical adventure to the land of gifted greenery that piques my senses and stimulates my psyche. Maybe I want all of these things. Maybe I want none of them. Maybe I want to take bits and pieces from all of these people to create my perfect match, my personal customization, my superlative Stepford-like suitor that will make all of my frequent fairy tale fantasies an actuality. But when is it enough? Paul Roberts is an American author and a social and economic elite, as I like to call him. He wrote The End of Food and The End of Oil, which discusses sustainability and agricultural issues in the U.S. He also wrote The Impulse Society, which is where a lot of my discussion is going to come from today. In Paul Roberts' Instant Gratification, Roberts discusses and interprets the concepts of gluttony, greed, and short-term gratification in current consumer culture. He expresses his apprehension for the impulse of society by posing the question, who is minding the future, to stimulate audience advocacy for alternatives to egocentric capitalism. We must consider uh, Robert's contention for collectivity in our personal lives if we are truly to promote 
positive change. By commencing with a personalized story of digital junkie Brett Walker's cyberspace struggle and ending by asserting that Walker saved himself by coming clean, Roberts indicates that we are all capable of making necessary change on an individual level. I can apply this to my social media use, particularly in terms of dating application. Tinder. I first heard of Tinder when speaking to a close friend after she and her significant other ended their relationship. She informed me that it was a dating application that people used to meet each other with. Her only caveat concerning this dating tool was its addictive nature. Knowing my tendency to pick up momentary ardent obsession, she warned to swipe with sensitivity. That is in reference to what I like to call the Tinder time deficit. I decided to try it out, give it a go. In the beginning, it was like a fun little game. I'd swipe right to suitors I found to be seemingly handsome and extroverted by their pictures. I'd initiate blithe banter, have fun little stress-relieving conversations, and move on with my day. But just as Robert so astutely asserts, the more you play, the more likely you'll be to upgrade to the next version. In the Tinder Twister, my next upgrade was with what the application's architects like to call moments. It started with one insignificant selfie to get my Tinder match's attention, but then all of the positive reinforcement to my enchanting green eyes and blonde hair like spun gold, and these are direct quotations here, my friends, um, persuaded me to upgrade my picture productivity. Sensing a theme here. Upgrade. Roberts uses the clever analogy of an upgrade treadmill to refer to the never-ending search for self-actualization. Without drawing out my Tinder tale too much longer, I will reveal my story's climax. Not too long ago, I realized I had over 600 Tinder matches, over 30 moments, and was having at least five new Tinder conversations daily. These conversations don't even include all of the time I consistently spent texting my matches that mutually decided to upgrade our relationship to the next level. You know, it's funny. I had all of these matches and all of these moments. I only actually managed to meet two of my Tinder matches to go on dates. And, yeah. I was in a ceaseless Tinder vortex that sucked up my time, energy, and frankly, creativity emitting an almost at the real aura of sexuality, intelligence, passion, ambiguity, and humor, all with the aim of seducing my suitors like a mythological siren is not an easy task. You know, it should be noted that it truly was not my intent to lure my Tinder suitors into an inescapable shipwreck. <sighs> to put it in the simplest terms possible, it just felt good to feel wanted, so. I wanted more. And I will be frank here, because I believe only the raw reality will make my point most effective. I use these men. I use them for my own self-indulgent desires, and when I was done, I tossed them aside like last week's garbage. Have I had a complete turnaround since then? And I'm a whole new person that doesn't seek that kind of short-term, self-indulgent gratification? <sighs> no. No, not really. That's not the answer most want to hear, but it's the truth. But there is a silver lining. Recently, I have become very close with one of my insightful and enlightened professors on campus. Interestingly enough, we are both neuroscience nerds in a family studies field. We've collectively discussed our good friend dopamine's role in directing our egocentric behavior. We have also brainstormed ways to produce similar effects from this neurotransmitter in a healthier way, at least healthier by our standards. There are a million questions to ask oneself when seeking enlightenment, but I'll just share a few that come to mind. How can I make myself feel good while still making others feel good?
When the self-centered craving comes, how can I see past the short-term satisfaction and make decisions based on my long-term health? What kind of perspective-taking approaches can I take to engross myself in the paradigm of another mind or multiple other minds? What does it take to see and act for the collective good? This is a lot to take in, yeah. The ambiguity of these philosophical questions leaves a great deal of room for circular reasoning. <laughs> it would make any average individual's head spin. That's normal. The light at the end of the tunnel? You don't have to do it alone. The beauty of seeking collectivity is that we collectively find ways to get there. Brett Walker received support from a rehabilitation center for internet addicts. I am growing and learning with my insightful advisor, and I also currently use meditation methods and natural herbal supplements to help calm my mind and body when I do feel anxious cravings. Also, by the way, just in case you guys were wondering, I did, in fact, delete my Tinder application. We live in an age when life hits us with tumultuous temptations every second of every day. Our ingrained instinct is to take a bite of the forbidden fruit and to continue biting until there is nothing left but a feeble core and an unappeasable appetite. To overcome the ceaseless battle, one must look within and ask themselves, how can I contend for collectivity? Once you do that, hop back up onto that upgrade treadmill like I was talking about. Only this time, upgrade to something meaningful, long-lasting, and substantial. Get rid of the impulse and disarm reason to give a title to such a silly thing as the Tinder time deficit. Thank you.